Hello and welcome to a very special episode today of Geekomania with me, Mark Sylvester, and my co-host. And Ben Upton. Today we'll be looking at one of the greatest game series of all time, Street Fighter. As wow. many of you know, as many of you <laughs> may know, Street Fighter is celebrating its twenty fifth uh, birthday this year. So we're going to be celebrating and looking at some of our favourite all time Street Fighter games. And we're gonna begin with what's the first game? Ben? Um, well, I joined the party quite late. Um, I only started playing it when uh, Street Fighter 4 came out, and that was the first Street Fighter I'd actually played. Yeah, I know, I'm terrible, That is I? pretty late, yeah, that is pretty, pretty late. <laughs> but no, I, I do actually really enjoy the game. I mean, glad I picked it up. And yeah, since then I have played pretty much every other Street Fighter except for like the Alpha series and one. But yeah, um... Street Fighter 4 was my first, and it was a pretty good game. Cool. My first was probably Street Fighter 2 on the SNES, when, uh, when we were going to a gaming shop in Ashford with my mum and my brother uh, when I was younger. I'm going out and buying it and then just playing it constantly and falling in love with it. Which and version what, is that? Like Turbo Super? Uh, not the first proper one, oh, the first but the, one, World, World Warrior. And then, basically, usually one of those people who likes characters who wears blue or has blue, but the minute I first saw Ryu or Ryu, uh, I just felt connected and just and just like you know fell in love with that mm. character. Well, I guess that segues nicely into favorite characters. So, <laughs> um, so you said yours was Ryu, yeah? Ryu and mm -hmm. Cammy. I like Cammy just because I I like Cammy because I feel kind of I know it's a bit patriotic because she's English and I just mm. like her character. Like you know, it's, she was the first Street Fighter character who was English, and I just thought she was quite a cool character, and it's quite cool that she. Uh, represents England as being so awesome and so kick ass. <laughs> and so very British and prim and stereotypically yes. secret agent ish. But she it? likes cats, so that's kind of not stereotypical. She likes English. cats, really? Yeah, she loves cats, yeah. Her Where main, that come in? <laughs> her main character trait, she, 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 if you notice this in Sheep Fighter 4, first thing she does, she's looking after a cat, isn't she? Then she goes, This is, uh, we need you after your day off. And this cat goes, What's a kind of wolf moon? <laughs> so you, you know, that was the weirdest meow. I know. <laughs> I, I, as you know, voice I, is my voice is still up, yeah. a bit messed up, so. Oh dear, wait, can we? Yeah, I tried to pick up Cammy at one point, but I was just terrible at playing as a really bad. She's basically, think of the way of playing as Cammy, it's the same way as playing with Ryu. It's so rather than pressing punch, it's more to do pressing kicks. Like, she, her motion to do the cannon drill and cannon spike are basically the same um, controls as doing the Aduken. And the Shuriken, yeah, I mean, except I, you have to press uh, a kick button rather than a punch button. Yeah, I was just not very good at like using the cannon drill. I never really got when to use that. I, was like, yeah, I guess you kind of duck under fireballs. Some fireballs are too big. It's, I wasn't very good with the cannon. She has also that other move where she like slides on the floor, which also can uh, go under and block um, projectiles yeah, as well. Yeah, it's the cannon drill. Not cannon drill, the other it's one. Not cannon drill. No, it's the weird one where you like she slides down and she and she grab onto them and there's that weird like circle um like flipping move oh right yeah 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 um well my favorite characters um i have two main characters one guile and that's mainly just because of his play style oh, it's yeah. nice and simple which is what i like about him he has two specials <laughs> For, uh, sonic boom which is his fireball and flash kick which is his uppercut that's yeah. all that's all you need and that's what i like about him because uh, at the beginning i was terrible with inputs so having just a guy with just two specials and just having like lots of different like kicks with different movements and punches which cover different areas, that's what I liked. Hmm. But Guile's personality leaves a bit to be desired because he's just very military and all he cares about is America. So he has a tattoo of America on both shoulders. He does indeed. Because he's and, that crazy. <laughs> and Jean-Claude Van Damme was an awesome guy as well. No, he wasn't. <laughs> but, <you know. laughs> yeah, right. We need someone all American with long blonde hair. Let's get Jean Claude Van Damme. He's the most American person I can think of. <laughs> yes, the, the, the muscles of Russell. <laughs> I love that. So funny. But yeah, other than that, my favorite actual character would have to be Dan Hibiki, who everyone thinks is a joke character, but you don't underestimate Dan Hibiki. Mm. He's quite. If you give you get mastered him, he can be quite good. I mean, the scary thing about that Hanabiki I just thought is people are like, oh, Dan Hanabiki's a wimp. I could take him in a fight. No, you couldn't. I mean, that man can shoot fire from one finger on his hand. Fire. <laughs> Admittedly, it's about the same amount of fire as a lighter would produce. But it's still but fire. It's fire. <laughs> yes, and I love his 
relationship he has with Blank as well. I think his relationship with Blank was quite amusing. It and is both, very weird. It's and like... they both work off of each other very well. It's kind of like a Laurel and Hardy sort of thing where they, they basically work off each other. It's yeah. like he's the in charge and he and Blank yeah. is like his little lackey. Da- Dan's saying that he taught Blank or everything he knows when in actual fact Blank has learnt nothing from Dan and Dan is just trying to big himself up and yes. get money for his small little dojo to teach the powers of Psycho. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> for his dad as well. Yes. I, lo- I love how Psycho is just a blatant ripoff of the whole Haddo. I can't remember. Show- is it Shoto? It's called Shoto, isn't it? It's, no, it's, oh, is it's it Haddo. Called? It's like... Is it Haddo? Yeah, it's Haddo. Mm. It's like all Hadouken sort of thing. And also you've got uh, the, it's the actual martial arts something. It's a weird assassin name, but they are like Shoto clones, basically, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah all pupils of Goken. Weird, weird Goken. Who was also, was also known as Shenron. When they actually is had... Goken Shenron? Yeah, they, it oh. kind of is Shenlong. They kind of made it for Shenlong because in they had an old, um, if you notice in an old uh, magazine of EGM, uh, they actually have like an April Fool's you can play as yeah. Shenlong. If you notice, Shenlong looks a lot like Goken, and, and Goken, in oh, a way, okay, I guess, yeah. is their version of Shenlong because if you notice... Why didn't they just name Goken Shenlong? That would have been so much more awesome. <laughs> I guess because Capcom liked to mess with the fans, you know, Street Fighter X Tekken. On um, this DLC and yeah. everything else, you know what Capcom are like. Well, I, I, the thing about them like making Mega Man in that way uh, is just like when they when they were making Street Fighter Cross Tekken, Mega Man was in a good place because you know Mega Man Legends was still coming out and what was yeah, it, Mega Man? yeah, they had Mega Man Ten out and yeah. X was coming out for the yeah, iPhone. so it's just like we have all these brilliant Mega Mans. Let's produce, let's make a funny Mega Man who's overweight, and then. It becomes a sad metaphor for the state that Mega Man is currently. And also, in. <laughs> as well, though, it, it's kind of taking the piss out of the old ca- cases and yeah. stuff of Mega Man, where he was actually a fat man with a gun as well. Yeah, I mean that's one of the things I've always liked about Capcom is they they don't take themselves too seriously. They do like money, yes. far too much. They do. They love <laughs> their money. They <laughs> love their money. But yeah, they're always good for sense of humour. Um, what other characters do I like? Um. Dudley. Dudley's another one of my favourites. Again, mainly because of the patriotic British side of him. And because, you know, he's one of the few, like, strong black characters in Street Fighter. Mm. I mean, mo- I mean, we have other black characters in Street Fighter, like DJ. Or but we don't talk about DJ. Dal Sim? <laughs> Dal Sim. Uh, I know Dal Sim is Indian. Really, he's Indian. But uh. actually, did you know DJ was... I think one of the only characters actually was created in Capcom USA. Yeah. Or everyone else was created well, in I Japan. I, well, I'm. Was he actually created in Capcom? Was he? Wasn't he like, cre- like the idea for DJ was created in America? I believe so, but I think he was actually was created as well. Because um, one of the, is it D James? Because like, is it one of the main developers of Capcom USA at the time? He had like this idea for a fun-loving kickboxer, mm. and they sent it over to Capcom in Japan, and they came back with this horrible Jamaican stereotype. With a huge toothy grin who plays the maracas and is a funky guy. <laughs> but he's a cool character. I do like DJ. He's quite funny. He, and his a, music is awesome as he's well. He's a good character, but he is the epitome of the racial stereotypes that Street Fighter has become known for. Indeed. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's kind of okay when like they do stuff like E-Honda, where it's like, okay, well, you know. He's a making, sumo wrestler. He's a sumo wrestler. Course. You know, making fun of your own stereotypes. That's fine. And they, and how I like the fact they take this piss out of like a lot of American things as well and mm. a lot of like around the world. Like Spanish person is very it's kind yeah, of funny. Vega. He's like Vega. It's kind of funny. Yes, he's kind of very stomach to a stain, but also at the same time though, it's kind of not. Vega's one of the stronger characters though, because he's he, although he's got that kind of bullfighter thing going on, he's not you know overtly like you know I am Spanish. That is a terrible Spanish accent, Ben. What are you doing? <laughs> um... <laughs> the hell accent am I doing? I have no um, idea what the hell you doing. That wasn't Spanish. That wasn't that was Spanish like at all. random yeah, bollocks. I, that, <laughs> vaguely with. European accent type. Indeed. Um, but yeah, I mean, more recently you've got like the racial stereotypes like Rufus, who is yes. the embodiment of fat America who watches Kung Fu movies. Although Indeed love, he does. Rufus is a hilarious I character. love Rufus as well. Masters! <laughs> His weird relationship with Ken. It'd be a very, very weird relationship, but funny as fuck. Yes, so, what is your favourite Street Fighter game, Mark? Uh, probably maybe either 2 or maybe Street Fighter 4. 2 because it was the first game I ever played with Street Fighter, so I don't really go into it. And 4 just because it was the first proper Street Fighter sequel they've done in years. But which version? 
Street, what do you mean? Uh, up Street to Fighter 2. Probably the original World War, just because just it was the first one. one I ever played. And uh, yes, I like the fact in like Champion and Turbo they put in the boss fighters, but I just have that you know, need the nostalgic feeling and just the love of the original one. And you remember just playing it all the time when I was a kid as Ryu and just doing all this cool stuff and then fighting against Vega, then losing to Wish and to Guile, then beating him, then losing again and switching back to Ryu and beating the game. So yeah, I s- Vega was a hard boss yeah. in that game. I mean, for me, my favourite edition so far is probably Super Street Fighter 4. Mainly just because of the art style. That's the first thing that drew me in because I really like the art style in Super Street Fighter 4. The way they've kind of like incorporated the old pixel art into the stylistic side of it and making it all these mm. like swishing ink swipes and stuff. I mean, when I first saw like uh, Re- Ryu's Ultra 2, the Metsu Hadoop, sure you can. That's beautiful. <laughs> it is, that and is I love the... the way their faces are like, like they make ridiculous faces when they yeah. get hit by it as well. They look like. They're making we face with us like their mouths are like are like out like they look so weird it's hilarious. Yeah. And Hakan is a hilarious character. Yes, Hakan is. I, I mean, there's funny. nothing quite like a introducing a new character to your game who is Turkish and an oil wrestler who has bright red skin, weird looking blue hair. Yes. And his ult super most powerful attack is coating the enemy in oil and then squeezing them out of between your legs <laughs> yes like you're taking a massive blanker shaped poo <laughs> indeed it does which is really stupid and it brilliantly is. hilarious but isn't it um, isn't she fighter isn't there a character for every single country nearly now is it there um, Must be nearly. they're getting there they're getting there i mean like he was you know uh hakan was the first turkish character in street fighter and a lot of turkish people are like wait this is the stereotype you choose for us <laughs> yeah uh, <laughs> I, I find that funny it's like wait I'm offended by the stereotype you've chosen for us. <laughs> it's like, I mean, my favourite English character is obviously Dudley, just because I love how British he is. I know, and you've got Birdie as well, who's also English. He's quite stereotypical about uh, how people see England as kind of fuckish, don't they? With the, with all the um, bugs and all the football thugs and that sort of thing as well. Yeah, uh, still though, I mean, there's nothing quite like having your own butler who is w- ready and willing at any time to drop down from a helicopter just to deliver you a cup of tea. Yeah, that's I don't awesome. think you can get much more British the than thing, that. But the thing is, though, <laughs> uh, how can he drink the tea with a glove? That's that's the funniest thing. I, he has must have trained for that sole purpose for <laughs> yes, years he... and years and years. Because that's insane. Like, how will he drink that, it with the gloves? Either that's that, hilarious. or he's got specially designed gloves that are magnetic, and the teacup itself is also a magnet, so he can just go like that and magnetically pick it up. Indeed. That's the scientific approach. And uh, let's face it, that man has enough money to do that. He does have <laughs> enough money, probably. I mean, isn't his whole story in Third Strike? Basically, everyone else is there like, oh, I've got to find like my long lost master. Dudley is there purely because he's lost the keys to his car and is trying to find them. <laughs> How oh, British mate. is that? Crikey, I appear to have lost my keys. I know, I shall travel the world beating up strangers until they give me my keys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love Dudley, he's awesome. Jeeves! Fetch the helicopter. <laughs> Brilliant stuff. So what have we got next? Uh, what is your favourite moment and why? Favourite moment? Um, oh or your gosh. first moment. What moment made, what stood out, or what, could be what moment stood out for you for what's playing Street Fighter? What stood out for me when I first started playing Street Fighter? Mm. I mean, the thing that initially drew me in was... The, the ultra combos in Street Fighter 4 and just how brilliantly flashy and ludicrous mm. they are. I mean, I know a lot of people don't like that and it takes them out of the game, but for me, it's just like I absolutely love the animations on almost every single one of those moves. Mm. I mean, just like the little touches where it just like shows little expressions on the character's face. Yes. Like the little uh, turn Guile makes after like the second kick in his like flash hurricane. It's just like, it's just like <laughs> now I'm serious. Kick. Oh, yes. Yes, get serious, guy. Uh, I'm getting a bit weird now. Stop me. Um, <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> but, yeah, no, I just really like... And the facial animation in that game is really good. Just the way, mm. like, they react to blows and the uh, mm. expressions on them. I mean, I really just like the whole art design on that game. That's the main thing that pulled me in. Mm. Uh, my moment, I would probably say, or a bit I loved, was just doing the first Hadouken, just 
doing the first special move that wasn't just a kick or a punch was insane. It's just like, oh my god, these people have different <laughs> moves and different things you can do. It's insane. You mean vaguely Japanese person can shoot fireballs from his hands? It's Indeed. amazing. I know, it's amazing. It's so cool. It's just like insane just how good that game was and just how popular it still is even 25 years later. Yeah, I mean, it, it's not really, it's aged very well. I mean, the game has stayed pretty much the same throughout all the years. I mean, I, I, there's been innovations in the gameplay, but like the core mechanics yes. have been, have stayed, and you know, they've affected almost every other fighter around, really. Except for, you know, Tekken's obviously cornered the 3D market and there's not been a lot of interchange there. Not a lot of mechanics really crossed no. until, you know, they crossed. <laughs> yes. The worst game I would love to see cross would be Mortal Kombat vs. Street Fighter. That's the one game I really want to see because I, those I were the two that. games that were very much against each other in the early 90s. It was Mortal Kombat and Street Fighter. So they should definitely make that game. As much as I'd love the sight, I can't imagine Ryu decapitating Ken, though. <laughs> well, the thing is that they could do what they did with DC, have it where they do like <laughs> heroic things where they don't actually kill each other. They're, they're made, Midway or <clears throat> Never Realms are making a new um, DC game, so let's see how that plays out. If that's all right, but still good as Mortal Kombat, they could probably do it. Yeah, I mean, the way it makes sense to do it is for the Mortal Kombat characters. Oh, God, my voice is starting to mess up now. <clears throat> Sorry, listeners. Um... But yeah, the best way they could possibly do it is to have the Mortal Kombat characters do things that are very Mortal Kombat. So they would have all the gory moves, they'd have all the mm. disembowelments and decapitations. And the Street Fighters could, you know, keep the flashy ultra combos, keep, you know, just implement them in as the fatalities. So, you know, you could just have, at the end of the match, Ryu just go up to Scorpion and just straight up Shin so it's sure you can him. Because mm. that would be a finisher. You don't or, get they, or they or they could potentially do it in a sense like have the ultra moves, but then have it in the same sense as the X rays that like they did in Mortal Kombat Nine, where the X rays were in a way their version of the ultra moves. I think that's a good way to do the super or, or, or the specials. But yeah, for like you know, Mortal Kombat fatalities occur at the end of the match. Mm. They're, they're they're purely flare, and if there's one thing that ultra combos are good for, it's flare. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I, as I said, you know, that's one of the biggest complaints in the tournament scene. For street, you know, for Street Fighter Four, is that the ultra combos take you out of the match? They take you out of that flow, and you know, if you see Mortal Kombat tournaments, fatalities really rarely happen because most people are just like jab, let's move on to the next round. It's because as well though, they don't want to do it because of the rating thing. If they do fatalities, they want to make it a high rating because you see. But in the same sense though, talking of fatalities, some characters like Akuma would be good for fatalities because yeah. he's known for killing people. I mean, so. Akuma's one of those guys who could probably appear as like sort of a weird half villain character in the whole thing and just end up destroying people completely. I mean, you could have him do a raging demon and just there being bones left at yes. the end. <laughs> you could totally. Or even M. Bison, he could do uh sort of move like Shang Tsung where he takes away their soul or whatever. Or he, he could just, you know, psycho crushes straight through someone yes. and explode in a pool of blood. You know, some characters suit it better. But you know, Dalsim is just like Dalsim's yoga fire, you know, it's not going to be the same as, like, Scorpion's fire, which just incinerates people's flesh and leaves them burnt and charred. Dalsim, mm. that doesn't really fit for Dalsim, because, you know... No, not at all. He's a peaceful guy that's looking after orphans and stuff, you know. But at the same time, though, Liu Kang was kind of known as being kind of a peaceful character, but he does all these Yeah, but he's moves. a peaceful character in the context of a world where people rip other people in half with their bare hands. <laughs> True. You know, comparatively, a guy who, you know, does bicycle kicks and, you know, he's fairly tame until he turns into a dragon and bites your torso off. Yes, <laughs> which was a cool fatality, unlike in Mortal Kombat 1, we just did like a, uh, yeah, a cartwheel he, he did a, a, cut, a cartwheel into but, an uppercut. That's your killing move. Yeah, yeah. it's like, well done, Liu Kang, well uh, done. Yeah, as I said, Liu Kang's the tame one of the yes. Mortal Kombat family. Um, yeah. So, trying to think of other things to say and talk about. Um, we can maybe talk about our least favourite Street Fighter moment and why. Our least street that's the favourite Street Fighter moment and why. Oh, okay, so the things that really turned me off about Street Fighter. Um, as I touched on before, racial stereotypes abound. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, this is nothing new for Japan. <laughs> no. Japan has always had quite a lot of racist moments in almost all of its media, if anything. I mean, 
You only have to look at Mr. Popo from Dragon Ball Z to realise, ooh, okay, um, yes, Mr. you're Popo. not quite so culturally sensitive, <laughs> are you, Japan? Because here you have a black genie who looks like a gollywog. <laughs> Just straight up looks, picture image of gollywog as a genie. <laughs> and yeah. What a, mm. <laughs> one of the main things I that I really love actually find, even though I love the game series, is just the constant remakes all the time. It's like a, less than a year and then suddenly a new one. And also the fact with the whole on disc DLC and all the extra money that they want to earn. And it's like, I don't mind waiting as long as I get a full game. I don't really want to play a game and suddenly, oh, by the way, next year we're making a super version of it. And it's just like, then, then the following year we're making an arcade version. The next year we're making a super duper. Ultra, Sonic, Super, blah, blah, blah version. Yeah, I mean, like... they have shown that they can do it well. I mean, like uh, with the edition of, like, Arcade Edition 2012, which was just a free big update to Super Street Fighter 4 Arcade Edition. Uh, that's the right way to do it, Capcom. What is the wrong way to do it is in your big Street Fighter Cross Tekken game, have on the disc 15 characters mm. that are completely locked out, yes. fully playable when hacked, and will only be unlocked when the Vita version comes out, and when, and then only then, paid for. Yes, totally. That is just dumb. That's just and, dumb and unfair. And also the fact with between Super, yes, I understand. Four was Super. I bought Super because it's a new one, and you had like quite a lot of characters. Just between Super to Arcade, you only added four characters. A bit like, why am I spending twenty pounds yeah, to four I mean, characters? Where at least if it's like ten extra ten or twenty characters, like yeah. between. Uh, four and super, it doesn't. It wouldn't have been so bad. Super wasn't a bad way to do it because there was twelve characters, I believe they added. Was it twelve? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, because yeah, there's a lot of third strike guys in there. Wasn't and they it? also added the rest of the world warriors in there as well. You had, it, like everyone basically every single character from Super Street Fighter. Yeah, because DJ was in Super. DJ yeah. and so was T Hot was introduced. As oh well. yeah, of course. Um, but yeah, that and not only that, but they released it at a cheaper pr price. Like I think it was only like thirty pounds on release in England. Mm. Which you know that's a good way to do an expansion like that because if you're clever, you know when as soon as they announce Super, you go, oh okay, I'll just uh, trade in Street Fighter Four now while it's still worth some money, yes, and then basically buy Super for a fiver, you know, if you're clever. That you say you need to do all the time of everything. Street Fighter Two had five five editions of that game. Street Fighter Three had three editions of that game. Mm. Uh, Alpha had. Each one was different, but two had two versions. But nowadays, they kind of seem to be, I don't know, it's just a bit like annoying at the same time. But it's all right, yeah, it's cool to make a new game, but at the same time, it's a bit like, why in the same game with just adding more characters, why not make like, a new version, or maybe even a sequel? Yeah, i got to admit, though, I was a little bit biased, because like, the whole cross Tekken thing, I wasn't too fussed about. Oh, well, and then, neither. And, and then I heard that Dudley was one of the characters that you have to pay for. I was like, Screw you, Capcom! You ain't making me pay money for Dudley. I'm sad now and angry. I know, that's why, as <laughs> soon as I saw them play Cat Tech, I was just like, just make a Mortal Kombat vs. Street Fighter mm. game already. I mean, it's, uh, honestly, I think Street Fighter Cross Tekken is a very good game, and I think it's gotten a lot of undue hate. But, because of that reason? Well, because of that reason, and also because there are quite a few bugs. But the bugs are something that really aren't going to affect you unless you're a high class tournament player. Which is fine, because I don't really care about the high-class tournament. <laughs> I don't. I, I'm not very good. I play people online, and I got no. trounced, like, ridiculously. I remember playing more Marvel's Capcom 2 online, and I got beaten, like, ten times in a row. And it's Marvel just like, vs. Capcom 2 online is a savage, savage place to go online. It is very, very savage. It's very, yeah. very hard. When you play... I, I honestly thought I was alright gamer, maybe quite good. But people online just make you feel like you're so adequate, or even a novice. Yeah, I mean, I... I... Bought that. I bought Marvel vs. Capcom 2 because I was getting hyped for Marvel vs. Capcom 3 and I was like, oh, okay, I'll play this. I'm, I'm pretty decent with Gambit, R Rogue, and Sentinel. I'll be, able to, I'll be able to get in there. And then I just come across like Magneto, Storm, Sentinel and just get destroyed in seconds or just come up against the cable and just can't do anything because he's just sitting at the left side of the screen shooting laser beams at me. And I can't get past, because whenever I get close, there's like a Ryushu or Yuken or Sentinel bloody yeah, missile he things uses coming his allies, in. isn't it? Yeah, I mean, effective use of assist is important, but it can get a bit it, ridiculous. It can very much so, and some people, I remember like one person beat me just using his assists. Yeah. 
<laughs> Marvel 2 is so cheap. It is. It's a fun game. Though. It's fantastic. As long game. as you're playing it with people who aren't ridiculously cheap, it's, yes. it's a decently fun game. That's one I play. I never use the assists. I just play it one on one because I find it be a bit better. Uh, I use assists, but it's just like I don't like using like keep away tactics to a complete fault. Like going cable, storm sentinel, and just staying at one side of the screen. That's not fun for me. That's an obstacle course. Yes. If I want an obstacle course, I'll go play Mario or a platformer, where it's an obstacle course through a magical adventure fun land. Or, or you could magical... even join the army if you wanted to, to do an obstacle <laughs> course. Yeah, if I re... no, uh, honestly, I think that would be a less grueling experience than playing, you know, hour after hour after hour of Marvel vs. Capcom 2 online. Yes. I would rather join the military. <laughs> but we're not saying it's a bad, bad game, we're just saying it's just online, it's just people just Oh, it's, it's a fun game, but it's a drill camp. Yes, totally. <laughs> but yeah, um, so what do you reckon's next for Street Fighter? Where do you reckon they'll go from there? Uh, probably making more games, because it's probably Capcom's one of their most famous games, or it could go in the way of Mega Man, could completely just die out. Mm-hmm. I, I hope it doesn't die out. It's too good a series for it to go to waste. And also as well, though, it's good in the same sense. I love, I love, love, love the fact that about Street Fighter was able to bring back the Street Fighter game genre. Mm. Like, that that was nearly dead. Then suddenly, when, as soon as Street Fighter 4 came out, if you notice, so many more fighting games are coming out, haven't there? I know I know there have been a few, like, the Tekkens and a few more come back here and there and Kill Gears, but it has, it's because of Street Fighter it's able to bring it back to yeah. its height again. Like... We've had since Street Fighter 4, we've had a new Mortal Kombat, we've had a new Blaze Blue, we're going to have a new Tekken, we've had that Skull Girls, we've had New so Dead many... or Alive, new Virtua Fighter, I mean yeah. it's just brought up, since Street Fighter 4 proved that the fighting genre is still alive, we have just had game after game after game after game, it's mm. been brilliant. And yeah, I mean, personally, I'm hoping for like, if they do make Street Fighter 5, I'm hoping for a more like, third strikey approach to it. I want, I mean, preferably I want pixel art. I want a proper full budget Street Fighter with pixel art. Bit like um, King of Fighters, like yeah, or, or, or like Blaz Blue kind of style, but mm. you know, just like proper Street Fighter art style with just you know two D sprites. That's what I really want because they can do sprites beautifully. They can do sprites beautifully. And that's why I like Street Fighter Four compared to EX, where it's actually even though they're 3D models, it's still played very much mm. on the 2D plane. Same with the new Mortal Kombat. 2D playing, but 3D characters, where so I kind of like that, where it's actually 2D, where it's not 3D, where you have to go around. That's why I don't think she would really work if it went all 3D. Yeah, and equally, weird. I'd want like more original characters. You know, much like they do with Third Strike, they have like Ryu, Ken, Chun Li, Akuma. That's all the returning characters we're giving you. Everyone else is new. That's the kind of thing I want. I want them to innovate more. Originally, they were and the first uh, Street Fighter. They were originally just gonna have. Uh, all new characters stuff because mm. everyone wanted Ryu and Ken that's why they put them in yeah. otherwise it would have been all those new characters but that's why I like Street Fighter 4 because you have all the old characters that everyone remembers it's a mix yeah but I wanted to go more in that direction so I mean not don't completely throw out the whole roster but you know I mean there's have, some... have the favourites like there's four you said and like the Kami who was like really popular and like Dudley and that sort of thing but then also have at the same time new characters I've seen I'll be honest Dudley's kind of expendable as much as I love him he's not a core cool to the Street Fighter franchise so yeah um i think that will we're just about do it for this weird street fighter special but before, before we go though hp we've got to say what does it mean to us what does street fighter mean to you what does it mean to me um it's fun game that's made fun by playing with other people and as long as those people aren't miles away from you and have spent far too much time playing this one game and destroy you <laughs> indeed I agree with that. HP. Street Fighter to me is one of those games that I always play, I've always loved, and it's the game that probably got me into fighting games, really. Yeah, well, so, as always, he's Mark Sylvester. And he's Ben Upton, and I hope you guys enjoy Geeky Mania Street Fighter Special, and thanks a lot there, guys, and thank you. <laughs>